Hello and welcome to Prototex Mastercam 2025 rollout video series. Don't forget to check out our website where you can find the latest download, install, and migration guides and videos. In section four of this series, we're going to take a look at multi axis enhancements found in Mastercam 2025. The first thing we're going to take a look at is hole making safety zone enhancements. Users gain much more control over this function in 25. Let's take a look in Mastercam. This first path represents a safety zone in Mastercam 2024. When I backplot this, the tip respects the safety zone, but the tool axis is only an average between the last and next drill vector, which can end up with undesirable results. The tool body and holder could be violating the safety zone, giving me bad motion. New. In Mastercam 2025, I have some more options. I'm going to turn on blending and smoothing, and let's take a look at blending first. The blending distance is basically how far the tool will travel before looking to add vectors normal to the safety zone. So if I put a large distance in there, let's say 40 inches, I will yield the same results. I'm also going to turn on vectors here to help see what is happening. The tool is just averaging between the two vectors and pointed down towards the bottom of the part. If I put in a smaller blending distance, let's say 0.1 inches, now my tool follows normal to the safety zone. But this distance is so small, I actually have tilts during my retracts from my holes. In this instance, my blending distance is less than my retract height, giving me those small wiggles. Let's adjust this. I'll set it to two inches and I'll apply that. Now I get clean retracts and clean motion staying normal to my safety zone. Next is the smoothing distance. The smoothing distance is basically how far it looks to find a vector. So if I put a large distance in there, it'll clean up some of these changes. You can kind of see in the picture here, it's going to eliminate the vectors and just keep the first and last one across that distance of motion. I'm going to put in a fairly large distance. Now, one of our old functions in here will also limit what this does. I probably want to keep a maximum step angle in here, but to better illustrate what the smoothing distance does, I'm going to increase this value. I can see that I now get a more even distribution of vectors and much fewer vectors. If I were to put in my maximum angle step, this is basically I cannot, I can only travel this many degrees before I add another vector. I will see that it will add vectors again and also give me a more uniform cut. I also gain a linear tolerance. This is like the line arc tolerance, just the linear portion of it. If there are any points that are small deviations along this safety zone, it'll minimize those points and clean up the code. If you leave a zero in this value, it'll be using the very small value of the system tolerance, 50 millions. All of these values give me better control over my safety zone movements. I can see that now my tool stays normal to my safety zone giving me a much better transition when I'm going 180 degrees around the part. In Deburr in Mastercam 2025, we can now define our cut direction while using five axis simultaneous cuts. Let's take a look in Mastercam. I'll select the entire model. I'll choose user defined. Choose the edge I wish to deburr. 
This is a 3D chain. I'll pick some avoidance geometry. I'll set my width. This is millimeters. And when I go to tool oxy control, I'll set to five axis simultaneous. And this is for when I am using flank taper tools. I will set preferred contact point to 10% along the tool length. When using flank or taper tools, I can now set and five axis simultaneous. I can now set climber conventional milling. I did have this option with these tools in three and four axis in previous versions of Mastercam. Let's take a look at the cut. Maintaining climbing or conventional milling can help make the cuts easier at the machine. In Mastercam 2025, Swarf Mill gets new flank tip and sink enhancements. Let's take a look. I'm going to create a Swarf Mill path. I'll pick a chamfer mill. I'll select the faces I wish to cut. Tool axis control gets a new automatic strategy. Also, now when I choose a chamfer mill on tool axis control, I can choose to cut with the tip or the flank. In previous versions, it would just cut with the flank of the tool. With the new tip option, I can now use chamfer mills and not introduce as much tilt to the cut. I'm going to add another tool path. This time, I'm going to use a flat end mill. This tool has a corner treatment on it. The tip flank will also work for corner treatments. Select the chamfer. And I do the cut with the tip treatment of the tool. In Mastercam 2025, Mastercam's entire multi-axis offering has been gone through with updates to any tool axis orientation menu. Descriptors have been added to the old drop-down menus that would have X, Y, and Z axis directions. This enhancement was started in a previous version has been expanded. Swarf Million Unified Deburr Pocketing Triangular Mesh 3 Plus 2 Auto and Convert to 5 Axis have all been gone through with additional descriptions. Also, being able to reference a tool plane axis allows users to define a direction quickly. Multi-axis pocket sees additional enhancements in Mastercam 2025. New entry, clearance, and plane control options. Let's take a look. I'm going to create a pocketing toolpath. I'm going to select the walls for my machining the floor, I'll add a containment, set a step over, and to just get one depth I'm going to put a large cut depth. The first new enhancement to pocketing is in 2024 we could limit it to 3 axis, in 2025 we can now limit it to 4 axis. I'm going to limit to about the X. I can see that I get a true 4-axis toolpath. The next enhancement involves the entry. Sometimes when I'm entering into radius floors, I could get a sharp kind of engagement there when I'm going from a vertical tool to following the tilts. New in 2025, I can now tilt during the helix. I 
I go into my back plot, I can turn on my vectors. I can see as I approach the floor, I can start introducing tilt to help alleviate this issue. Also new, I can now use an automatic clearance. All these options give me added usability and enhanced control to my pocketing path. Rotary Advance sees new enhancements from Astrocam 2025, giving 4-axis roughing more options and control. Let's take a look in Mastercam. I'm gonna use a quarter inch bull nose cutter. Make sure stock's going from my job setup. It's just a cylinder the size of the part. There's a new sorting option for finishing. In the past, I've had depth and region. Now I have groups. We'll start with the default depth. I'm gonna select my entire part. I'm going to define an axis of rotation. I'm going to put some axial limits on the part. There are two pockets on this part, so sorting by depth that wants to complete each depth, jumping back and forth between the pockets. Let's switch to region. Now the cutter stays in this pocket. There's not a bunch of tracks going between, but there are some different features in this pocket and it's jumping back and forth between those features. Let's check out the new one. Groups. This will separate the different cuts so it's not jumping back and forth. Now it finishes out one wall before coming back and finishing out this boss. We also have the ability to add user defined depth cuts. I right click to add a depth. At this time they need to be manually typed in. So I've already analyzed the radius of these floors. With this, I can just get cuts at the two floor depths. We've also added containment. Containment limits the cuts to just the specified area. In Mastercam 2025, we see enhancements to our feed rate control zone in our multi-axis unified triangular mesh and multi-axis pocketing toolpaths. We now get a blending distance to help adjust the feed rate coming in and out of our control zones. Let's take a look in Mastercam. On this part, I'm going to add a unified toolpath. I'm going to select this 5 16 ball end mill. I'm going to use drive curves for my cut pattern. I'm going to select my machining geometries. For tool axis control, I'm going to go from a point. And now I'm going to set up my feed rate control zone. I'm going to select this interior radius for my control zone. And in that area, I'm going to slow my feed rate by 20%. These are functions we all had, what we gain in 2025, is this new blending distance. So what I'll do is I'll put a blending distance of one inch in there and an inch before that zone and after that zone, it'll slowly decrease the rate and then speed it back up. Let's take a look in back plot. So I'm at my initial rate of 44 inches per minute. And as I approach that one inch zone, I start slowing my feed rate down 43, 38, once I'm entered my zone, I'm in my 8.8 .8 through the zone. And now as I exit the zone, I slowly increase the feed rate back up to reach my 44 inches per minute again, utilizing my new blending distance for my feed rate control zones. 
Lastly, for the multi-axis section, we see a new toolpath added to the unified multi-axis toolpaths. We now get a wireframe toolpath. For users familiar with the five-axis curve toolpath, you're going to see a lot of similarities. Let's take a look in Mastercam. I'm going to create a unified path. I will select the 16 millimeter ball end mill. For the cut pattern, I'll do a curve and now here's where I see the new option. I now get a wireframe toolpath. Notice that it eliminates the surface geometry selection. I'll pick my curve. That'll drive this chain. I'll pick an orientation or like axis control line. I can set my machine side relative to my chain direction for my wireframe geometry. Maximum snap distance is how far away my axis control lines are from my drive chain. I can leave positive or negative stock. Tool axis control, I'm limited to the orientation lines I selected. I can add a side tilt and I can use collision control to control my depth to a surface. I do lose the machine geometry because there's none selected, but I can add avoidance geometry and I can have depth cuts or multiple passes. Once again, those already familiar with the curve five axis toolpath should see a lot of similarities in this cut. And this completes the fourth video covering multi-axis enhancements in Prototex Mastercam 2025 rollout presentation. Be sure to check out all of our other videos and thanks for watching.